Okay, so as cheap as tripods are, there is really just no excuse not to be using one. A tripod like this costs 10 or $15, and you can get the little attachment uh, to mount an iPhone or any smartphone for about five bucks on eBay, brand new. And it basically just works like this. You just pop in your iPhone, and it just holds it there for you. And now, you've got a stable platform that you can get video from that's not all shaky. So for $15, there's a difference between shaky video like this or nice fluid video like this. You can also get steady cams to help hold the iPhone steady while carrying it. You should not hold the phone in your hand while video recording unless there's absolutely no other way to do it. Okay, so the built-in microphone on the iPhone is really not very useful beyond just a couple of feet. Okay, so this is what typical indoor audio sounds like at about eight feet away from the iPhone. And it's echoey and it sounds horrible. But you may notice that it now suddenly sounds a whole lot better. How am I doing that? Well, the trick here is that I have a hidden iPhone in my pocket using an audio recorder, which I'm dubbing the sound in during post. Okay, so another option you can do to make a room like this sound better is just to hold a professional microphone. Now, believe it or not, you can connect a microphone like this directly to the iPhone's headphone slash microphone jack using an XLR cable converter. And um, these kind of microphones, they seem like they would be expensive, but you can actually get them on eBay really cheap. Uh, this is an Audio-Technica. It's a pretty nice microphone, and I bought it for $50 on eBay, so don't get too scared off by the price of these things. Um, another option is using a shotgun mic like this. If you don't want it in the picture, you can just hide it slightly off you know, just outside of the picture of, of what you're recording. And uh, you can pick up a nice one of these for like one to $200. They're a little bit more expensive, but they can definitely be worth it at times. And again, you can plug these directly in to your iPhone using the correct adapter. So why not? For my videos, I typically use this Zoom H4n for my audio recording. Additionally, you could just forget the audio that's recorded from the iPhone and redub in a narration track. Okay, so the best place to go to record any narration is into a closet full of clothes. Uh, the, the soft clothes and fabric will dampen all of the sound. Of course, you'll want to close the door and just turn on your phone and use a professional recording app and, and record your narration. Then you can edit that in later. Also, if you're going to use the same room a lot, consider installing some sound deadening foam. Okay, so you're probably going to want to download an actual professional recording app instead of just using the built-in voice recorder. Um, the built-in version doesn't record very high fidelity. Um, I noticed the one in iOS 7 is a little bit better, uh, but the older ones in iOS 4, 5, and 6, and you know, those are actually pretty bad. They, they, uh, they sound pretty terrible. Okay, so this is what a voice recording sounds like using the built-in app on the iPhone. Okay, and this is what it sounds like using a professional recording app. It should sound a whole lot clearer. Personally, I've been using an app called iTalk, which has different quality settings. Use the best setting, which is 44 kilohertz. The built-in video recording software is also very weak. I use a paid app called Movie Pro. This app allows me to do several things, such as force the orientation to stay horizontal, and set a specific resolution and frame rate that I want to record and edit in. And most importantly, record in a higher bitrate for better quality video. It also gives me the ability to lock the focus, exposure, and white balance. It's also worth mentioning you'll need a decent editing software on your computer. I typically use Apple's Final Cut Pro. So I can't find anyone who actually manufactures a lens hood for the iPhone, but you can actually make one. I'm, I just took this iPhone tripod mount and uh, I just taped a, um, a piece of paper onto the top to kind, to, uh, kind of prevent some of the sunlight from hitting the lens. Um, a lens hood is not absolutely essential. It's mostly going to be on those days where the sun is shining into your lens and hopefully you can avoid that by shooting with the sun to your back, but you can't always uh, do that. So if the sun's going to be shining in, especially when you're filming a dark area, uh, you can you need a lens hood. So sometimes what I'll do if I'm out filming and it's a sunny day and I've got a scene and I can tell that there's some glare on the lens, um, I'll just take off my cap uh, temporarily and kind of just hold it over the phone like this. In this example, you can see with and without the homemade lens hood. Okay, so the light pickup on the iPhone is pretty good, uh, especially as far as smartphone goes, uh, but it's not as good as a standalone camera. And uh, so what you wanna do to make it better is just add more light. 
Adding more light uh, affects the photo quality in nearly every way. Not only does it make it brighter and sharper and clearer and more contrast and more colorful, but um, it also helps remove any of the graininess that you might get from having a low light situation. One of the easiest ways is to use a cheap lamp stand like this one. You can position the light exactly where you need it to go. I have two directional bulbs and three for ambient. Alright, so if you're going to be filming in the same room a lot, um, you probably want to go ahead and upgrade your light bulbs. If you're using light bulbs like this, don't. I mean, besides the fact they're horribly inefficient, uh, they put off a terrible color spectrum. You can compensate for it some in post, but it's it's, it's really just not necessary. Just, just go ahead and replace them. Uh, you can either use the, um, the fluorescence or uh, LED. I, I'm actually switched completely to LED now. Um, they, they just seem to work better for me, uh, pro pro mostly because they don't flicker any. Um, but the key is, when you go to look for your light bulbs, look on the package, make sure it either says daylight or look for like a color spectrum indicator and you want at least 5,000K, preferably more. You can get them up to like 7,000. Okay, so I have reconfigured this room to look pretty much just like standard residential lighting using old incandescent bulbs. This is exactly the way things would look if I were trying to use my iPhone at my parents' or my grandma's house. Uh, this is exactly what it would look like. Um, now, let's change that up a bit. Okay, and here is the same room having put good light bulbs back in the sockets and using my lamp stand to supplement that a little bit. Drastic difference, isn't it? Believe it or not, you can run an external monitor from the iPhone 5 and actually view it in real time. This is handy because you can run the camera app and see yourself in a preview monitor. I also take an opportunity to plug in external power while doing this so that my iPhone won't be eating up battery power during recording. So there's only one rule about using a digital zoom. And that rule is just don't use it. It's horrible. Let me show you why, in case it wasn't obvious. Let's say I have a scene I want to zoom into. Here's what it looks like using the iPhone's digital zoom. Now, let me use my Galaxy camera's optical zoom to take that same shot. You can see how much drastically better this looks. Okay, so there are two ways to get around the digital zoom problem. The first should be obvious, but I want to show you this funny scene from an old episode of Red Dwarf because I'm hoping this will help stick it in your brain. My optical system doesn't appear to have a zoom function. <laughs> no, human eyes don't have a zoom. Well, then how do you bring a small object into sharp focus? Well, you just move your head closer to the object. <laughs> See? Move your head closer. <laughs> Yeah, so basically you just want to pick up the camera and tripod and move it closer to the subject that you're trying to record. That's the absolute best way that you can get a zoom. So in the event that for some reason you can't move the phone closer, there is an, another alternative. You can buy uh, an optical zoom attachment that you can stick on the front of your iPhone. It looks like this. Okay, so don't hold your phone like this. I know it's comfortable to hold it like this, but it's not practical. And I, it should be common sense, but I still see people doing it all the time. Turn your phone 90 degrees. There have even been songs made about this. Look some of them up on YouTube. They're pretty funny. So yeah, turn it 90 degrees. There's almost no excuse for taking a video in portrait mode. Portrait mode just screams out that the video was done by an amateur. And it gives everyone online a headache trying to watch it. Now look how much better the same scene looks when shot in landscape mode. So this should be obvious, but this is a phone after all. It gets put in pockets, in purses, um, it gets rubbed all over your face, uh, you get oils from your hand and your face all over the phone, and guess what? The lens gets dirty. So you need to examine the lens each and every time you get ready to shoot a scene. Use a microfiber cloth and clean it. In a pinch, if you can't find anything else, you can use your shirt and clean the lens if you have to, but just rub something over it make sure it's clear. Have you ever heard the saying that a bad musician will always blame his instrument? The same can kind of be said in photography, and uh, you know, the iPhone actually has a pretty amazing camera in it, um, but uh, it works a lot better when the person using it has some basic photography skills. So here are just a few more tips for you. Don't take video with someone's head next to a lamp. And don't take video of someone standing in front of a window. It looks horrible. 
Also, you might want to be aware of any noises in your environment that your phone is picking up while you're recording, like dogs, or lawnmowers, or air conditioners. So some people might be surprised to find out that uh, in some of my previous videos, the entire video was recorded on an iPhone 5. Uh, this actually happened because I was using a fairly expensive uh, camcorder and it broke. And um, so I was saving up some money to get a new camera. And then, so in the interim, I had to use something to record video. So I just decided to start using my iPhone. And so in doing so, I learned a lot of things about uh, using the iPhone for recording professional video, and most people were completely unaware uh, that those episodes were in fact shot on an iPhone. So that's why I made this video, um, because I thought, you know, I could pass along some of the information I learned uh, during that process, and uh, hopefully uh, some of the um, amateur videos I see out there on YouTube will improve a little bit as a result. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.